To the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Guns. Self-defense. Conceal carry. This is the Patriot Defense Podcast. From the war room in Idaho's high desert, here's your host, Todd Eccles. back the patriot defense podcast the podcast that shall not be numbered via episode make it so todd make, yeah, make it so. <laughs> it's only because i'm too lazy to pull up the computer and take a look and i i, don't know, I forget and sometimes we go a month in between episodes right we got together what was it last how two weeks two ago? weeks ago yeah two weeks yeah, ago two we weeks. got together you were you were free i was free uh we were able to get together and, and we did an episode now our uh, listeners never heard the episode right because uh, we had a little tech issue. Technical difficulties. Technical di- difficulties. Uh, someone, I'm not naming names, forgot to, you know, didn't turn their mic on. Who who would not turn their mic on, Todd? There's two of us in the room oh. here. And, uh, yeah, it's probably me. Mercy. I think it was me. It wasn't your daughter. No, uh, no not my daughter, Mercy. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, that's that's too much. That's too much personal info there. So fair enough. How you doing, Dean? You ready for Christmas? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, this is the first year I feel ready. Uh, got the wife all bought for and paid for and wrapped. It, it, you even it, wrapped it? You know, I didn't have to do any wrapping this year because my kids did it. Oh, nice. Yeah, we did almost all of our shopping online. When the packages showed up, I'm like, here you go, kids. And they're just leave them they, in the box and rip yeah, the label off of it. Exactly. That's what they did. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And they know which ones are mine because I always write the name as the first name is don't open. And the second name is it's Christmas, damn it. That's actually, that's, that's genius. So the kids know exactly what it is. That's genius. And you're teaching your kids to curse all the same Right, time. and use it properly, yeah. That's, that's sweet, I like that's it. That's right, yeah. Well, I've been married, what, 22, 23 years, something like that. And uh, this year, well, she's done it in the past, but this year my wife said, don't give me anything for Christmas. I said, no, 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 what do oh, you want for Christmas? Oh, Todd. She says, don't give me anything for Christmas. And so I... I, That's a trap, Todd. You I know, know that. I know it is, but I thought about this. And she, we've, she spent the last 22 years training me, training me to do what she says. Right. Right? Yeah. Go to church on Sunday, Todd. So what do I do? I get up and go to church. Mow the lawn, Todd. So I go outside and I mow the lawn. Take out the trash, Todd. So I go outside right. and take out the trash. If I know what's good for me, I'm going to do these things. Or even the subtle hints like... Gee, it's a little warm in here. So you subconsciously get up and turn on the ceiling fan. That's right. True. So she's trained me, right? Right. So when I say, what do you want for Christmas? And she says, don't get me anything for Christmas. Immediately, the meme of Admiral Akbar comes to mind. It's a trap. It's a trap. No, actually, what came to my mind is she's trained me good. I'm going to listen to her. No, Todd, no, you can't. (laughs) But I was in doing my radio show. I do a radio show once a week. Um, and I was telling the ladies in there, they were asking me if I, was, if I was ready for Christmas. And I said, well, I'm done. I didn't buy anything. They're like, well, what about your wife? They know who my wife is. She's mm-hmm. gone in there and, and, and dealt with them a few times. And uh, <laughs> they uh, it got a little excited when I said I didn't buy her anything. Oh, Todd. And one of the sales ladies there offered to go to, into town with me after the show and, and show me how simple it was and help pick out something for my wife and i said no i got it i got it handled she goes what are you gonna get your wife said i'm gonna make her a coupon book (laughs) oh no (laughs) anyhow they didn't like that idea and so they kind of schooled me on that a little bit but i went in and i bought my my wife a christmas present i did do that and one of the ladies that was so concerned i wasn't going to she gave me her cell phone number and i had to take (laughs) a picture of it of it and the receipt and, and send it to her via text message to prove to her that I actually went out and got it done. Oh, boy. So, anyhow, I wasn't feeling the Christmas spirit up till, well, for a long time. And I went out yesterday, and I bought my wife a Christmas present, and bam, all of a sudden I got the Christmas spirit. Oh, no. Did you buy everything for your kids, too? No, I just no? bought one thing. I don't uh-huh. care about them. <laughs> the wife the wife will handle the rest right. of that. Yeah. I, 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 I buy one present if she's lucky. Right. And then, then I eat. Right. I just sit back and eat all weekend. 
and I do podcasts, and huh? uh, I actually may go shoot a little bit. We'll see how cold it is. So on on the on the holidays, do you come off your 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 strict diet? Do you uh, do you splurge a little bit? No, this this podcast they don't really know about my own. Maybe they do. Um, I I don't know. We'll. We'll see. Okay. Um, gonna... So this package that I brought you today has some homemade fudge in it. Yeah, probably. It's you have to try even just a little piece. Dean, I just got into a size thirty-two waist. Right, one little piece, Todd. One now I tell little you, I tell piece. You that you said how proud you were of me. Yeah. I actually just think you, you want me to go back to a thirty. I want you to look like more like more like me again, dude. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know. Well, it's Christmas. I may look into. Uh, I may look into some fudge. I maybe cookie. I don't know. We'll she see. made. She made white chocolate fudge with caramel dribbled all over it. Now it's. Is, is there dark chocolate in that box? I'm a really big dark chocolate fan. You know, there's some peanut butter with chocolate fudge. Okay. Peanut I'm, butter wait, 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 chocolate looking, fudge. You know my big thing. I know now, it's dark. You know, this is yeah. this is we got to get back to gun talk. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. okay. My big thing right now though is so I'm getting ready to do these races, uh -huh. um, and I'm looking for what they call fuel or like energy, quick energy. Yeah. While I'm running, and you got to try it out now before you get to this big race. Yeah. Okay. Fudge. So, so it doesn't make you sick. Actually, not fudge. So I used to be a caffeine fiend. Right. Okay. I haven't had caffeine for a long time, like many years, years and years. And I like dark chocolate. Guess what I discovered? What's that? What? Dark chocolate covered espresso beans. Oh, that sounds horrible. They, <laughs> they are awesome. Oh, it's like eating they, eating deer scat. <laughs> so, so a gal I know got had some, and she gave me some. Mm -hmm. She's getting them out of the house because she likes to eat them. Okay. <laughs> so she gave me some, and I was headed down the canyon to go run with my brother, and I popped a small handful in uh, about six or seven in my mouth. Yeah. The world was a different place in about five minutes. Yeah, oh, like, like instant crack? Like, the world was beautiful. I was going to <laughs> run. I was looking forward to it. It was freaking fantastic. Really? Yeah. How so, long did the euphoria last? I don't know. Until, oh. well, I got started running anyway. But uh, I think I'm going to. I'm not going to eat them all the time. I'm going to buy some more for these races. I think they're so my thing. Just for the race day. Oh, it livens up yeah. everything. I don't know if it's wow. the dark. I think it's well. I'm sure it's the espresso beans. <laughs> right, that's got to be it. But yeah. uh, they're awesome. Wow. So if anyone wants to buy the uh, gun guy at Patriot Defense, maybe they want to. There's no testing for the class that you have to take through me. But uh, if you want to pass without me giving you too hard of a time, chocolate covered, dark chocolate covered espresso beans. No imitations. Yeah, you'll be so wired you won't pay attention. No imitations. Yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, we should probably get to gun talk. Get some guns, yeah. It's been two weeks. Have you done any shooting at all? Uh, I haven't done any shooting, but I've been carrying more. Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I um I went in, and it's kind of funny. I took a picture of it, and I should post it up on the Patriot Defense uh, Facebook page. It's kind of funny. Um, there's this video I play in my class of uh, this guy, and he's talking about um, how he started carrying a firearm and how he found himself in the Nordstrom's dressing room trying on a pair of jeans with his G19. Okay, I found my, I'm cheap, okay, well, uh -huh. so I'm cheap. Today, I found myself in Walmart, the dressing room at Walmart, <laughs> with my VP9. Wait, wait, does, does Walmart allow firearms in there? I, I didn't know. I don't really care. <laughs> In Idaho, even if they if they see it, all they can all they have to do is ask you to leave. Right. And if it's not signed, I can carry in there. So, but I'm in the dresser. I got a picture of my belt, my wallet, any keys, anything else that was in my pockets, my gun laying there on the little seat, you know. And <laughs> I was like trying. This is why I don't like try and close. Period. Right. But man, like when, when I got my my loadout here, yeah, my 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 you know my everything I carry in my pockets and everything else is uh, kind of interesting. I kind of had to chuckle about it. Yeah, like, make I was sure wondering, you're... the guy next door to me in the dressing room next door, if he was doing the same thing I was. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you carry your biggest in the waistband holster to make sure it fits when you exactly. try on jeans. Well, exactly. Yeah. My wife wants to go buy me clothes. You can't do that. I got to I gotta make sure it works with my gun. Here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So True. Anyhow, this is a life in the day of someone who carries. I'm sure I'm not the only one that can relate to that. Right. But I had a couple people, um, let's see, come in last weekend. Mm -hmm. and and do a little shooting kind of a little private class and uh we couldn't get into the indoor range so we the wind was blowing on saturday real yeah, bad was so cold. we did a little shooting outside not much we're gonna get back together and do more shooting but we um had a little indoor class and the lady had never shot a gun before and the guy had and they had some brand new guns and uh, we were taking a look at them 
Um, a neat thing, and I, I don't can't well no we have never mentioned this because we did mention it in the last podcast, but mm. that never made it to the big time. Oh right, yeah. The the microphone incident. Yeah, the uh, yeah. we won't talk about that. The microphone incident we shall not the, mention. The 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 TT. Yeah. Todd's technical. Todd's technical difficulty difficulties. Yes. TTD. But I managed to pick up. Um, I, I think I've had it a month, and I played with it a little bit. It's called a Mantis X. And you can go to mantisx.com, and no, I'm not getting any money from any of this, okay? Yeah, full disclosure, yeah. Yeah, full disclosure. They're not sponsoring me, but it's a cool little deal. And it's like a little, um, you can't see the laser, but it mounts, it's like a little laser thing that mounts onto the, the rail of your, your handgun. And you download an app. Now, you played with this a few yeah. weeks ago, right? Yeah. And you can, it's perfect for dry fire. Now, let me say this, a little warning. When you are dry firing your firearm, make sure there's no ammo in the room. Make sure the gun is clear. Do not point it at anybody. Okay. Now, with this system, you have to hang a target on the wall and aim your firearm at it. Make sure it's not a bedroom wall. Make sure it's still a safe direction. Okay. Make sure no one's on the other side of the wall. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and uh, what you do is you fire up your app and you put in left-handed, right-handed the firearm you're using, um, and uh, it takes all that, all those specs into into account, and then you actually will start training with it. And you'll have to dry fire once while you're aiming at the target, and then you you know you have to um, you know run the rack the slide to recock the gun and fire it again, and you do it like eight, nine, ten times, whatever it says, and it will show you when you pull the trigger where you hit on the supposed target, and it'll show you if it's not a good shot, it will show you what you supposedly or pretty much chances are what you did wrong and how to fix it, and it'll also the coolest thing I. I um, saw on it is it'll show it'll trace your shot so as you bring your firearm up I gotta look at my little piece of paper here because it has three <laughs> colors and I forget which is which is which as you bring your firearm up it will show you I think it's um, I could get the colors wrong but it's gonna show you red okay there's gonna be a red line where you when you when you first drew up on the target where you, where that was and then it'll show you where you aim and then when you click the trigger when you pull the trigger it's going to show you where you hit with a different color and then where your gun barrel moves after you pull the trigger. And it's phenomenal. It's very surprising. Right, it really is. So what did you think when you used it? So it, it shows you where you're screwing up. It can tell you if you're pulling it the, the, the pistol one way or another. Yeah. Um, it, if, you're, uh, you know, if you're jerking the trigger or if, uh, uh, if you're putting too much, well, if you, if you look up where you're going um, afterwards, you know you can see where the where the muzzle was before, where the muzzle was afterward. And you can tell if you're pushing or pulling too much with one hand or the other. Or yeah, and you might else. be able to do that after each shot. I just haven't played with it enough. You might be uh -huh. able to go in there and look. I'm not positive on that. Yeah, I need to do some more playing with it. I have it four or five days off, um, so I think I'm going to uh, I'm going to I got the I'm going to get the man cave all situated in here, and I think I'm going to do some uh, some playing with that. And, and, and check it all out but it's a i think it's yeah. a fantastic tool it's a really great tool to learn on you can use it with live fire too um and i have done that another friend of mine bought one i encouraged him to buy one mm -hmm. and uh, he um he used it and we used to actually live fire and it did okay live fire. i think the key though where this thing's really going to shine is through the dry fire yeah it's really gonna so recoil doesn't affect it as far as it's you can tell it's not supposed to uh -huh. i think it may affect it a little bit yeah, but I would buy it just purely on the dry on the fire dry fire aspect, aspect. and yeah. it's it's really not that much money. I spent like 150 bucks on it, mm -hmm. and so there's there's no subscription to the app or anything like that. You don't have to buy the app, but it's it's fantastic. I picked them up in Filer at um, Brother in Arms Firearms um, on Main Street. They have them. Last time I was, they ordered a bunch more, but they only had one left. They got them in, and they were selling the heck out of them. Wow! So can you retrofit fit it to fit like a uh, revolver? Or... I think you probably can because it's made. They have some special different clips uh -huh. that you can you can purchase separately to fit on guns that don't have rails. Nice. And um, I mean, I don't see. I didn't see all the options. One of them was just kind of a, like a peel and stick yeah. type okay. deal. So yeah. you may be able to stick it on a revolver. Yeah. I mean, I actually I think it'd be cool. I'm not a rifle guy. I think it'd be really I think it'd be cool, cool on, to a stick on a too. rifle too. Like yeah. An AR or something. Yeah. And really see what was going on there. Yeah. But uh, I know a buddy of mine that bought one. He works for the city. And uh, he was showing it to some um, uh, some uh, his uh, police officers, and they're actually thinking about going and just buying a couple, and so they can kind of train with them, dry fire, and show their guys what they're doing wrong. I know right. as a instructor, and I kind of tested it out with these people. 
I was I was telling them what they were doing wrong, but I can actually with yeah, this, you can show them. I can prove it to them. I can I can prove to them what they're doing wrong. It's uh it's pretty amazing actually. I'm anxious to get a little more live fire behind it and kind of work that out a little bit. But it's amazing too. I know the people that took my class. I think they talked about going and buying one. Nice. He's like, you know, he's like, I'm a farmer and there's still work to do, but it's really slow compared to the summer. He's like, I'll just go out in my shop and and dry fire practice and a little bit. Dry fire yeah. practice, work on this. So I don't know. I, they're they're cool. Right. I was impressed. I think it's a great tool. We're gonna have to get together and do some more playing around with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. As soon as True. the weather warms up, we can get outside. It's, right. Uh, it was so it was so, so cold. cold last Saturday Serious, when we were yeah. out there shooting there. Take a couple shots, put your gloves on. And I didn't realize because <laughs> I had my gloves on because I was just watching them shoot, helping them. I didn't have to actually handle the firearm. Uh-huh. And uh, I um, got done. We were cleaning up, and I took my gloves off so I could grab some firearms and help carry me. I was like, oh, man, those are cold. Were they uh, steel? I, yeah, I yeah. Feel, I feel really bad for that gal. Her hands was all ice cold. Oh, I'm shoot. Sure. I wouldn't let him shoot with gloves on for obvious reasons. I yeah. mean, it's, it's, it's cold out, and you have big, thick gloves on. Should you know how to shoot with gloves? <laughs> sure. But if you got a newbie, sometimes gl- guns and gloves don't mix. Right. Um, you, you have a hard time feeling them. You know, you don't, your sensors, you know, sense, uh, touch sensory you know, aren't working that well. And they could slip out of your hand and all kinds of. Right. Crazy. You lose fine motor skills and you lose tac- uh, tactile That's function. Coming yeah. from the big words, coming from the doctor over there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, they're, they're, it's, it's a really good deal. But. In the wintertime, I could see how this would actually help a bunch because it's too cold yeah, to get out and shoot. Too cold to get out, so you can just dry fire for and, a bit. And, you know, they say the top shooters will tell you they thousands, and they spend thousands and thousands and thousands of, of dry fires. And then they'll obviously go shoot live on the range as well, but they will have way more dry fire time to help improve their shooting than they will right. actually shooting on the range because you're building that muscle memory of yeah. how to pull that trigger, how to keep everything steady, how to line up the sights. I mean, can you imagine with a new shooter... So, my biggest, and I just, this kind of just popped into my head. Uh, my big deal is with new shooters, sometimes you teach them how to line the sights up. It's really hard to know if they're actually lining the sights up. You put this thing on, and you go somewhere dry fire without the live fire. I'm going to be able mm-hmm. to look on the app, and I will know whether or not they're aiming the they're lining up correctly. Up. Yeah. That'd, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. I can see implications for this, too, of of uh, draw and fire as well. Oh yeah, for your muzzle control. Yeah. And Ooh, I want to taking it out now. of your wall. Yeah, taking it out of your out of your uh, uh, holster. holster, and then just point shooting too to see how you're if you're doing well with point shooting as well. well. Think about it, because when you draw, and we were going down, and, you know, we haven't talked much about it, but there's huh? when you draw a firearm and draw it to fire it. So we've talked about this before. In fact, we we've, mm-hmm. we've done it with it before. You have your draw stroke. You end up having what they call um, uh, fishing. Yeah, which is you come high and you pull the gun down and through the target, and then you have what they call bowling, which is you come low and you raise the gun to the target. When actually what you want is drawing and you want to punch it straight out. Right. So if it's gonna tra- if it's gonna track, if only you people listening to this right now could see the visual of Todd fishing, bowling, fishing, bowling, and punching, and punching. <laughs> yeah. So. It, it's going to be able to track though. That laser is going to. You're going to be able to. Oh my gosh, it's awesome. Right. It's going to track, and it'll it'll prove to you whether you're fishing, or bowling, bowling or punching or straight doing out. Doing it right. Yeah. That is it, that is that's phenomenal. I didn't even think about right? that. Right. And much safer than just doing it at a live fire and getting yeah. your hand in front of it and shooting a finger. Wow. I'm. Uh, in fact, I think as soon as we're done here, we're going to do so. Today or tomorrow, I may. You know, we may. We, it's right. going to take us a couple minutes. Right. Yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> so, anyhow, I'm uh, I'm sick of the cold, Dean. I'm ready yeah. to go somewhere warmer. Oh, serious, yeah. And uh, yeah, I don't True. know about you. I don't I don't want to be in Arizona. It gets real hot, but yeah. right now it doesn't sound too horrible. Yeah, be a snowbird. That's the way to go. So I always thought snowbirds were crazy. Right until you get old, <laughs> until and you, you want to be one. <laughs> exactly. My uncle and my aunt. They're snowbirds, and I remember it was a couple of years ago. He's coming through here, and he found out that I did this on the side, and he's uh-huh. like. Man, I got this. Uh, I carry a. I think it's a thirty-eight special. Cause I keep a thirty-eight special on my in my motorhome. He's like, you know, we all this travel and stuff, and you know, stuff happens. And I'm like, oh, cool. Can I take a look at it? I don't know where it is. Oh, jeez. 
<laughs> I mean, he's like, but it's in the motorhome. He's like, yeah, it's in the motorhome yeah, somewhere. somewhere. Oh so, goodness. Anyhow, that just kind of jogged my mind. How there, funny. A little story. So there. if you're if you're if you're gonna train, don't throw the training away by not being able to find your yeah, firearm. You need to know where your firearm is. Yeah. You need to shoot it a little. I'll give him a break. He's kind of old. Uh, true. So it. I don't know. Interesting thing. What right. what people do. So we had a really interesting uh, radio show um, this week, and we had a lot of we've been getting a lot of phone calls, and uh, some of the phone calls were, well, we we talked about how if someone breaks into your house, um, you know, and and you feel threatened, how you can you can shoot someone, but you don't mm-hmm. want to shoot someone who turns around and is running out the door once you once they see you, right? And we started getting into the, all the intricacies of that. And we had people calling up saying, well, I'm just too afraid to do anything now. I'm going to get in trouble for this. I'm going to get in trouble for that. I'm going to do this. I said, no, you just need to know the laws. You need to think it through. You need to think about these scenarios and decide what you're going to do and make decisions ahead of time. Right. And um, I ended the show. (laughs) I ended the show by saying, and probably irritating a lot of people, but by saying that that's what's wrong with constitutional carry. Constitutional carry is not a bad thing to a certain extent. Where I see it as bad is people will just take a firearm, they will holster the firearm up with no training, no law instruction, no anything, and they're just going to carry this gun. And we even had the host of the show, and he's not the main host. It was a guy filling in, and I'm not busting his chops. Okay, he didn't know. Huh? We were talking about, he goes, we were talking about how if you shoot someone, okay, it's going to change your life. And right. it will. It we're will, all human. Yeah. It's going to change our life. It's going to change, even if we're defending ourselves, it's going to change our life. Um, so he's like, maybe you don't want to shoot someone. Maybe you want to, you know, gun firearms should always be used as a tool of last resort. So think about it. Maybe you don't want to shoot him. Maybe you want to fire a round up in the air. Maybe you want to put a round in the ground. And uh, me and Forrest, Forrest is always on that show. We looked at him. We No, no, no. We didn't even let him finish. That is, you don't, first of all, you don't want to do that. If you the situation deems that you have to pull your firearm and use it, you have to use that firearm. Right. Okay? If you are not scared enough for your life, you will not pull that fire. You know, don't pull the don't firearm. Don't pull the trigger. Yeah, don't don't even. Oh, yeah, don't even pull out the, yeah, the weapon. Yeah, because if you say, well, I shot him in the knee, and the jury goes, well, why'd you shoot him in the knee? Well, because I was too afraid to kill him. Well, then you weren't even scared enough to be using the firearm. How big of a threat was he? Why did you do that? Why did you shoot in the ceiling? Why did you shoot in the floor? Why didn't you just shoot him? You obviously weren't scared enough. Why didn't you even fire your firearm? Besides that, if you fire up in the air, even if it's in your own house, that bullet is going to go up through the ceiling, and it's going to come down somewhere, and you're responsible for everything that leaves your firearm, and that right there is a negligent is, is a negligence. Right. You didn't care. Right. So anyhow, I posted that that's the problem with constitutional carry is too many yahoos are just going to holster their gun up with no... No training. No training, no, no education, forethought. Yeah. nothing, and just go. And that's that's not the way it needs to be. That's not right. the way it works, no. folks. It's not. You're going to get yourself into some trouble. I hear lots of stuff in my class. Every time I give a class and people go, oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, yeah, you do now. That's right. why you're here. Yeah. So. True. I don't know. So shall we touch so, on? Go ahead. Well, did you did you meet anyone else there in the in the studio that day? Oh, um. Actually, it wasn't this week. It was yeah. the, the week before. I met a... Oh, she told me her name. And I got to read it. Now, Glenetta Ziderveld? Ziderveld. Yeah, it was Ziderveld. Yeah, yeah. Glenetta Ziderveld. Um, she's actually running for um, a state representative. She's a Republican. Um, and I'm just... I was talking with her. And uh, she's got really good Second Amendment views. And I'm not... I don't want to get super political on the show. I mean, vote who you're going to vote for. Um but I like her a lot. Uh, she's 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 blue collar. She's the you know she's the the people's representative. That's mm-hmm. and she's she's not she's not some hoity toity that's coming down from you know money that everyone else in their family has been a representative and whatnot. She just decided something needs to be done. She doesn't like the direction things are headed. and She's gonna make a change, and so she's running. And she pulled me aside. I had a meeting with her. I wanted to make sure I understood where she was coming from and what she believed in, especially on the Second Amendment. And on the you know Constitution, before I supported her, and um, she told me where she stood, and I, I agree with it. And we're going to get her on the show, probably after Christmas. Um, um, she has agreed to come on the podcast with us and, and 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 talk to us and explain about herself. But she talked to me about doing some fundraisers. She's mm-hmm. got to raise money. She she goes, man, I hate not doing stuff on my own. I hate asking people for money. 
but she wants to do one where she she wants to empower women um, empower women show them that the gun's not a bad thing that can be there to help them if if needed and um, so she is wants me to help help host a, what she calls a ladies day on the range and it's going to be you know you know we don't have all the the specific details quite yet because this is just and came up within the last three or four days mm -hmm. um, we're gonna hold it at my house I think it's gonna be catered um, it's gonna be affordable she's going to, we're gonna have uh, for people you know if you've already shot before great if not come um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over handgun safety handgun manipulation um, show them how stuff works basic basic firearm knowledge and then we're gonna go out on the range and we're gonna shoot a little bit. Now this isn't gonna be for till probably the end of March. So when it's warm. When it's hopefully weather warm weather warm -er. warmer. Yeah. Weather is still a wild card. Okay. Now you to do this, you you are not gonna have to have your own firearm. You don't even have to bring your own ammo. I'm gonna I have firearms, we'll have plenty of firearms there, different sizes to use. You know, a couple shots with this one, a couple shots with that one, just to get people interested and get them a little, you know, a little bit of shooting experience. Yeah, and you have enough firearms, you can come down and kind of Pick and choose and see what you like, see yeah. what works, see and what fits your hand. Yeah, and if I get sneaky enough with my wife, I'll have more by then. Right? <laughs> yeah. I've already got two or three picked out that I want. Right. For your wife. Yeah. Uh, for, yeah, for my wife. Yeah, That's it. of course. So, anyhow, I think it'll be a good time, and I'll, she'll talk about it when she gets on here. And I think she'll also be on the radio with us at one point. Um, but when I get the exact date and time and all that... Uh, we'll throw it out there. But if you're interested, let me know, and I'll let you get in touch with her. She's going to handle all that. I'm just mm -hmm. volunteering my time and my range and my classroom. She's going to—I don't know how she wants to handle payment or tickets or I don't. That's not my ball game. That's hers. I don't want to deal with that at all. True. When you come to take a class with me, a basic permit class, people try to pay me ahead of time. Like, no, no, no. Pay me at the end of the day. I don't want to deal with all that garbage. That's not the fun part for me. Right. Uh, so we actually, my wife. I'm not allowed to touch the money. My wife comes at the end of the day and handles that portion of it. So it's, it's true, though, Dean. You right? Know, you, know I, you know that that's how it works in my family too. And I'm okay with. Yeah, that. I'm okay with that too. I'm okay. I just want to be able to buy a gun every now and then. And money, numbers, uh, put, finances make my eyes bleed. I want to put fuel in my scout. Every true. Now and then. Yeah. So that's that's all I need. Right. So anyhow, all right. I'll, if you, you know, that's just what's in the works i don't know the exact details but i think it'll be fun um i'm anxious for you guys to uh hear what she has to say on the podcast in fact i may have you here as well and i may actually order a look at that i got two more plugins for mine oh look at that we yeah. may uh, i may get another microphone and uh that'll be fun we can you can you can have a couple booms and a desk in between and and we can have a real studio this may be a legit studio <laughs> I may have to upgrade upgrade my soundproofing here that right. I don't ever use. <laughs> I've even got the I got the don't tread on me flag on the wall, the join or die flag on the wall. I the may, uh, the I goose may decoy even, in the corner. The, the goose uh, decoy. I may right? actually paint the door. Get those uh, fireflies off there. Yeah. Hey, that's the, the rainbow fairies and the. Uh, yeah. That's, yeah. The, that, those are on there to keep me grounded. Sure. Okay. <laughs> keep me <laughs> grounded. So. You had something that you we we talked about on the podcast that never made it to um, the air. Yeah, yeah. There is. I'll let you kind of take over, and and you could talk for a while. Oh, it's all good. I I enjoy uh, every minute with listening to you talk. Yeah, I, I learn. Every I want to listen to you now. It's all you're, good. You're a little so, more well spoken. Oh, you're very kind. So I've been trying to uh, <laughs> learn more about the HR 38, which is the the concealed carry reciprocity. Uh, uh, the National Reciprocity Act, and the the it seems to me that the as I re I actually tried to read it, made kind of sense to me. It, it sounds good, except for one thing. In in this, there's an out for states that don't want to have concealed carry. So you know, there's places like, uh, of course, California, uh, uh, Oregon, certain places like Portland, the Seattle area, uh, D.C., Chicago, all these big cities that don't want to have anyone concealed carry. Well, the out that's written into the bill says, if the place you want to carry reciprocally does not have laws that allow you to concealed carry, then you cannot concealed carry there. So then that begs the question, what happens then? We, they pass the law. These cities don't want to have anyone come in there and carry. You think you can carry there, but all they have to do, change their laws and, and outlaw uh, concealed carry, then you can't carry in that place. 
um, we listened to a, uh, uh, another lady, uh, uh, a, a lawyer from Alex, Boise. Alex Kincaid. Alex Kincaid made a very strong argument about this, that if they pass this law, it's not going to really do much good for us because those places that don't want concealed carry can just change their laws. And you and you can almost guarantee that the liberal bastion of uh, the People's Republic of California will change its laws and not allow any concealed carry. Then why would they want? Why would they be pushing this law through anyway? Why would everyone uh, seem to be on board? Well, I think they've been trying to get it through for years and years. And the only way that they're going to get uh, 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 democratic votes on this or progressive votes, we don't, we don't want to go by parties, but progressive votes on this is if they throw in something like that that gives them an out. And the same thing for the uh, uh, the second half of the bill, which is the fix NICS, the fix NICS or NICS fix, however you want to pronounce that. The only way they, they feel that they can get reciprocity passed is if they throw in this fix NICS portion of the, of the bill. And the fix NICS, every website you go to and look at and try and read up on this, they're going to tell you something different about it. One website is going to say, oh, yeah, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, these other guys are lying. Well, you go to the other site and read their, their try to get the source information. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, no, no, no. The other guys are lying. This thing is really bad. Don't even, don't, 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 don't do it. And it's, it's, uh, I tried to read that portion of the bill and it was so convoluted and it, 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 it made me fall asleep. Honestly, it, it put me out. It was worse than reading the old Testament. It, it was horrible <laughs> trying to read this thing and get through it and understand it. The, about the only part that I understood about it was the fact that it requires, uh, uh, uh government entities like, uh, 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 the department of justice to make sure that they report everyone that's not supposed to uh, own a firearm to the NICS system. So uh, it would kind of uh, hold a, these entities accountable like the Air Force who didn't report the domestic violence case for the shooter who shot up the church here just recently. It would fix that loophole. However, what it also does is it um, sets aside a whole bunch of money, like millions, almost billions of dollars, in order to fund... Uh, these government entities to overload the system with just petty stuff. So, so let's say you have a traffic ticket in a different state. You paid the ticket, but you didn't go to your court date. Well, now you're considered a fugitive from the law. That gets reported to the NICS, and you're not. You're going to be denied a firearm. And as and I'm going to step in here, and you, I'll let sure. you take over when you're done because there's lots more stuff to talk about. But uh -huh. as we watch that video from Alex Kincaid, and I posted that video, and maybe I need to repost it again. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Um, it she she talks about a case where there was a soldier, someone who came back from war, um, a vet, and he anyhow he they had him stated for medical reasons because he was going through a lot of surgeries he had to have someone sign something over so someone could take care of his funds his money and pay his bills for him because he wasn't didn't have mental issues he had physical issues like having a broken back and he was unable to pay his bills himself because he was in the hospital um but that got reported to the fbi and they said, well, he's not well enough to be able to handle his own money. So then he was put on a list where he couldn't purchase a gun. And the thing is, is even though it was it was a kind of a mess up anyway, she says it usually takes, and she deals with a lot of these, about two years to get that off your record and clean again so you can go and purchase a firearm. Right. So the, the part of the bill that I read that, that kind of dealt with something like this that I actually I tried to understand is it said that you – it takes about two years for the government to get back to you if you uh, file an appeal uh, to try and find out why you were denied uh, access to firearms, uh, denied uh, purchasing a firearm. It, right now, it takes them; they have up to two years in order to get back to you. But if uh, with the fix Nix bill, they have sixty days to get back to you. So supposedly it'll it'll, 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 okay, it'll speed so it up. It will speed it up. Yeah. We, supposedly hopefully yeah what about that elite class that are going to get fired so with this it allows federal judges any federal judge to conceal carry anywhere anytime um without a permit without training nothing so these federal judges can carry at schools they can carry in federal buildings they can carry in their own courts they can carry anywhere and these are the people that are most of them are regulating away our Second Amendment rights. Exactly. These are the ones that are actually going to get the rights and be given the free pass, no training, no anything, to carry wherever they want, and at the same time take away our rights. Exactly. You know, it, uh, 
the she uh, the, the 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 lady in the Alice, in her, Kincaid. Yeah, Alice Kincaid brought up the point that uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, just had a case to come before them where they ruled that there is no constitutional right to concealed carry. And this is where the outcomes with with uh, HR 38, but be, because the, the the Ninth Circuit uh, ruled that there is no right to concealed carry, um, and the Supreme Court failed to rule on that, they 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 refused to bring a ruling on this. So now it's it's law right now. That's what gives the the different states the out, the ability to say no, we we don't need concealed carry because the Ninth Circuit says we don't need it. If the Supreme Court had put on their big boy pants and taken up this case and ruled on it and uh, said uh, if they would have found that we do have a constitutional right to concealed carry, then that out would not be in H.R. 38. But they don't, and so they don't really care. No, because... They, they don't care because they're going to be able to They're going to be able to carry anyway, anyway. This yeah. Passes. So there's two different ways of looking at it. There's, and the NRA, I'm going to point out that the NRA is behind this bill 100%. And why they are is beyond me i mean i think it's going to give us a little but they're going to give up a lot and right i don't see that as a fair trade by any means i they want I, the reciprocity so bad they're willing to give up a little bit of freedom in order to get that and that's i don't that's not a that's not that's a deal breaker for me right don't do it so the nra is behind this and then the so they're a big name as far as you know gun lobby gun lobbyists or whatever right and then the other big group is the goa which is the gun owners of america mm -hmm. and they're saying no we don't want this we don't want this they can see that it's we're giving up our rights they don't want right. anything to do with this so it's pretty interesting so you can say they've been trying to pass this bill or a bill like this reciprocity bill for probably four years now three four years and um and people are saying right now, you know, we got our president in there. We got we got the House. They're trying to, but they, have they really done anything? No, right. they haven't done anything. They could easily do something. They haven't done anything. So let's bring this to the forefront. This is just Todd talking, by the way. So let's bring this to the forefront. <laughs> We've been trying to get this done for three or four years. Okay. So let's go ahead and attach all this anti-gun legislation to yeah. it. So maybe it won't pass, but we can say, hey, man, we tried. We got it there. But it didn't pass. Well, know, these ineffectual leaders in the in our Senate in our in our uh, Congress, they think that they have to get Democratic votes to pass anything right yeah. now. So they 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 attach the stuff like the fixed nicks to this, so that they can get the votes to get it to pass. Because honestly, even though the Senate we have a majority, it's a very slim majority, and you've got some some Republicans in there that rhinos, rhinos. Yeah, maybe yeah. they really should. Be uh, running under uh, the Democrat Party name. Well, instead. another thing too that we need to remember is all these people. You know, one side and both sides. You know what? When when the when the cameras are off, when no one's recording, these people go to lunch together. Right. They golf together. Yeah. They go to parties together. So who really knows yeah. what is going on? What's going there? on behind the scenes? You scratch my back, I'll scratch your back. It's all behind the scenes. And what yeah. what it boils down to the way I look at it, at least being here in Idaho, now that mm -hmm. we have the Idaho enhanced permit. Um, is the way I look at it is we can already carry and I think in the video she states 40 states I'd have to look and count again last right. count it was like 34 but anyhow it's a heck of a lot of states right. it's a heck of a lot of states that you can carry and that, that honor that you know are reciprocal with Idaho's enhanced permit that's a lot of states really what, if if you know, some people go, oh, I want to carry to California. Well, chances are if this goes through, they're just going to change their laws anyhow. Right. You're still not going to be able to carry in California. Some of these other places that you would possibly, you think you're going to get with this reciprocity of this, whatever. This reciprocity, yeah. And um, so why even do it? Why, you're not, you're going to lose those anyway. So why give up rights? As far as I'm concerned, um, the enhanced Idaho enhanced concealed carry is the, that permit is the way to go. That's good enough. That might be as good as we get without losing any other rights. Right. Why gum up the works with even more red tape and make the N N C N I C S system even worse by flooding it with slower just frivolous uh, uh, stuff? It you know to a certain extent I think it's all about data collection. Yeah. They just they just want to collect it all. Right. They want it all. They want to know everything about you. Right. So. Uh, those thoughts are rolling through my head as I was right. in Sportsman's Warehouse today looking at firearms. <laughs> I had to go over and buy some stuff in the bow hunting section for, for a Christmas thing. 
And uh, my wife was with me, and I drug her over to the counter, and we, I didn't I didn't touch anything. No? Did she touch stuff? No. Did I you know, make her touch stuff? No. I know where my line in the sand <laughs> is, and if I touch it, it usually ends up being mine at one point. Oh, shoot. So, I don't, you know what? To be honest with you, I always want to buy guns. Don't get me wrong. But mm-hmm. there's nothing out there right now that I just can't live without. Right. Nothing, nothing new, anyway. I mean, yeah. some really cool, and you're going to die when I say this, uh-huh. some really cool, maybe old-type revolvers. Todd, a revolver? I, I'm thinking. I'm. I'm thinking maybe that might be in the, like a like a single action or a. No, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe like a like a like a 44 mag or a 44 special or something. Yeah, something lightweight. You could, something just to yeah. play with. Something right. Fun. I even thought about a big 500 Smith. Oh wow! <laughs> but but yeah, actually, the gun I really want right now, which is they keep every couple weeks, they keep throwing up a Facebook post about it. It's getting closer. It's getting closer. It's starting to piss me off frankly because i uh, want this gun uh, is one uh, it's called pd10 and it makes it a, a avidity arms and there's a gentleman a big them. name in the business and mm-hmm. you probably i kind of follow more of the uh um more of the um the gun instructor culture a little bit right. more than you do yeah um it, you know have you ever heard of rob pincus no okay he is a he's a pretty well-known instructor and he teamed up with eagle imports avidity arms and they created their own, what they're calling their just an awesome concealed carry gun. It's got it's a single stack, but it's a full size, thin single stack. Uses 1911 mags. Okay. And it's got claw sights on it, so you can actually rack the slide. Ooh, yeah. Without actually using your your firearm, it's got really awesome texturing. It's supposed to be awesome. He's been putting it through some rigorous testing. You see it all over Facebook when he teaches classes. He lets the students and I don't even know how many versions of this gun there are because yeah. I mean. Some of the tests they put in there are, are grueling, and if it has a hiccup, they take they go back and, and, and try they, and figure it out. Yeah, and they, yeah, and they fix. Is it. it a composite? Is it a metal frame? What it's, is it? It's going to be a composite, uh-huh. and it's a, like I said, it's a semi-auto. Um, and is it striker fired? Is it? It's a striker fired, uh-huh. and it's going to be right around five hundred bucks. So really affordable. Affordable, yeah. Yeah, really, really affordable, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting one. As soon as they come out, I'm going to go buy one. Oh. Now I'm not one of those guys that goes out and buys a brand new firearm when it comes out because typically. If it's going to have a bad year, that first year is going to be the trouble year. Right. But um, I'm really thinking about um, really thinking about getting this one as soon as it comes out. Just because I've seen all the testing. I mean, he introduced it at last year's SHOT Show. Huh. And it still isn't out. So, um, what the crunk? I know. But it'll when it, when, it, when it comes out, I'm buying it. I don't care right? if I've got to empty the Patriot Defense. <laughs> Checking, Slush fund? <laughs> yeah, whatever. I'm going to go buy this stinking gun. I've been waiting too long for it. But uh, that brings up SHOT Show. Yeah. I'm never going to go to SHOT Show. My dream is to go to <laughs> SHOT Show, Dean. You'll, spend, I, you'll lose all your money, huh? I, I get on these stupid mailers. Yeah? I, oh, I get online. I pre-register for this thing. Uh-huh. We're not accepting. Well, I know. I'm much one on the list. You have to prove yourself to go to SHOT Show. Yeah. Not everyone can just go to SHOT Show. You got to be in the industry somehow. Right. Okay. And uh, I get on the list where they're supposed to get a hold of me. Email me back, uh-huh. and then I'm supposed to prove myself that I'm one of the part of the industry, and that I'm allowed to go to Shot Show. I don't get past oh, the stupid sign up list. You're allowed. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize it was that rigorous. Yeah, you can't just go. Wow. I don't get past the sign up list like three years in a row. <laughs> like I mean, you're I like mean, you're an outsider in the, the industry. What the hell else right? am I supposed to do? <laughs> I get on their damn list, and no one gets a hold of me. Ah, oh, shoot. It, it makes me sad, Dean. Yeah, true. So I'm true. almost given up on the dream of actually ever going to SHOT Show. Yeah. And I know there's probably people out there that have passes. And they could probably give me one because you, you can take, some people can take other people to SHOT yeah. Show. Yeah, And And I'm not saying I wouldn't go. But part of me says, dang it, I... You want to get in on your own merits. I want to get in on my own freaking merits. Yeah. There's people that get them less than me. Yeah, I, I I run classes. I do this. I do that. I know someone who opened a gun store. They've been open for two months, and they got all kinds of passes in the mail. Really? I, they don't like me. I don't know what it is. Mm. Uh, but I'm doing a podcast yeah. now. I may have to put that on my Apple. I'm doing a podcast <laughs> now. I do a radio show. I've been running a handgun instruction business for like four and a half, almost five years now. I have lots of friends who shoot stuff. That's it. I have a range. <laughs> I've got lots of cool mall ninja gear. Skills. Tactical. Skills. I'm tactical. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to buy me a bulletproof vest. 
I don't know. I don't know what I gotta freaking do. Maybe I don't want to join their club. Nah. I, I want to maybe want to look from the outside in and just criticize, right? And irritate people and just be, because you can't be probably, there too. <laughs> if I if I if I, if I caused waves, they'd probably give me an invite. Yeah, if you if you get critical enough. Yeah. If I if I if I can get if I can get passes someday. I'll get one for you too, Dean. Right. I don't know. I'll protest and not go. Well, we'll go. We got to right. take... You'll, uh, go, you'll walk in with like your two passes. Like, this is in protest. I'm not bringing anyone else because you guys are jerks. No, I'm going to bring you. We're going to get some media badges and we're going to do podcasts. Oh, right. Right from the floor. Yeah. We're going to just annoy true. the living crap right. out of people. Right around sticking microphones on people's faces. Right? That's right. Yeah, so. True. Anyhow, if, can you hear that in the background? My dogs are barking. There must be a coyote coming in. No, they're probably hungry. No? Oh. They're true. probably hungry. There are not any liberal deer it's, running around the backfield. You got me all fired up, and now they hear oh. me yelling, so I probably should go. <laughs> um, but anyhow, it is, uh, hopefully, I've got lots of time now that we're recording this the uh, Friday before Christmas. If I can get my stuff together, I may actually get it, you know, actually put out before Christmas. Over, over the weekend? Over wow. the weekend. It may be. Will that happen? You Maybe. You know, I used to listen to these shows and edit them. I'm almost to the point now that it takes a lot of time. Yeah. I'm um, almost to the point now where I say, screw editing. Let's just go. Just fire Boom. it off. There I'll, it is. I'll put the front the front half of the class on there. I'll do the little, the, a little intro and the exit and just hit go. And however it hits the uh, airwaves, the podcast land is how it hits podcast land. True. So uh, you don't. I don't think we have anything that needs to edit out, right? Um. Uh... No, we're good. And uh, if we do, guess what? We're just we're keeping it real, Dean. True, keep we're it keeping real. Keeping it real. Can so, be honest. Yeah. Anyone, uh, anyway, I hope everyone has a good Christmas or right. had a good Christmas or whatever. And, Spend uh, time with loved ones. True. Get, get a gun. Get some ammo. Do something. Try some dry fire. Try some dry fire. You need this uh, new this Mantis uh, X deal. Go see my buddies uh, um, um, over at uh, Brothers in Arms Firearm. Uh, go see Sandy and Chris down there. Tell them, uh, tell them I sent you in. Right. I don't know. To all you know, our whole two listeners. Right. <laughs> go you, in there. Outside of you and me. Outside, <laughs> you don't even freaking listen. You don't listen to this. Don't lie to me. Glenetta might listen to this. So Glen- right. If you're listening to this, go go buy something at Brothers in Arms. Tell them that. Uh, the Patriot Arms Pat- uh, recommended them. Yeah, Patriot Defense. Patriot, Patriot Defense. Arms. You don't oh, even know. I'm the- killing you. I'm killing you. I'm man. done. Oh, you know what? Shoot. It's time to cut it off. Everyone, yeah, have a good Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. See you later.